In this video, we're going to see a few examples of standing waves, and we're going to learn about a metric that helps describe standing waves. I've included a figure from Wikipedia here that shows some standing waves for different values of gamma. I've also included the equation for the envelope of a standing wave. The first thing I want you to notice is that the maxima and the minima of these standing wave patterns do seem to depend on the gamma and the way we predicted. We thought the maxima would have a height of 1 plus gamma times the amplitude, which is 1 volt in this case, and the minimum would have a height of 1 minus gamma times the amplitude. We can see that this peak is at 1.6 volts, and this trough is at 0.4 volts, which lines up with expectations. As an aside, the middle graph has an interesting feature, which is that the reflection coefficient contributes some phase to the reflected wave. A gamma of minus 0.33 is still purely real, but the negative sign means reflected waves have an additional 180 degrees of phase compared to instant waves. And you can see that at this boundary if you look very closely. This is a reminder that reflection coefficients, especially complex reflection coefficients, add phase to reflected waves. VSWR, or the voltage standing wave ratio, is the ratio of the peak height to the trough height. So this point divided by this point. Because we already know the peak and trough voltages have the same scaling factor in front of them, and we already know the maximum and minimum value of the x-dependent factor of our envelope, it's pretty easy to calculate their ratio. We find that VSWR is 1 plus the magnitude of gamma over 1 minus the magnitude of gamma. You might think the VSWR equation we have is a bit silly, because VSWR tells us exactly the same thing as the magnitude of gamma. A little bit of algebra will reveal that you can write a function to go up, either from VSWR to magnitude of gamma, or from the magnitude of gamma to VSWR. So why care about both numbers, particularly if we could know the full complex value of gamma, which tells us more than VSWR? The answer is historical. VSWR is important because it is relatively easy to measure using a device called a slotted line, which you can imagine as a transmission line with a sliding oscilloscope probe on top that can measure the magnitude of V of xt. Old-timey engineers relied on VSWR before we were able to accurately measure complex-valued quantities like gamma. That heritage continues today because VSWR still shows up on many data sheets. A few final notes. First, VSWR can provide a handy rule of thumb for when an RF system is too reflective. Engineers I've spoken to consider VSWR greater than 5 essentially unusable. Second, if you're talking to an old-timey engineer, they might insist VSWR is pronounced Viswar. That's a matter of taste. So in summary, VSWR is a measurement of impedance matching uh, that preceded gamma. Sec and VSWR is the ratio at the voltage of the peak of the standing wave to the voltage at the trough. Uh, and finally, it's given by these equations down here. We can find it in terms of the magnitude of gamma, or we can find gamma in terms of VSWR.